So this is a case that came before the Supreme Court. It's of great relevance to litigators and transaction lawyers alike. Anybody who's involved in the process of drafting and construing contracts will be interested in the outcome of this case. Specifically, it dealt with uh, reasonableness provisions in contracts, and it turns on its head the process of construing contracts as lawyers will have understood that um, as a result of case law dating back over a century. So the particular contract that came before the Supreme Court for decision in sequent nominees was a lease. It was a long lease of premises in Soho, and the tenant wanted to be able to bring itself within the enfranchisement legislation. So in other words, it wanted to uh, compulsorily purchase the freehold from the landlord if it was able to do so. And so it had to turn more of the premises to residential use in order to do that. It appeared under the user clause that it was able to do that, because there was express provision granted for using the whole of the premises for residential use. There was a separate planning clause in the lease that required the tenant to observe and perform all of its statutory obligations under the planning legislation, and also it required the tenant to obtain the landlord's consent if it were to make a planning application. So the tenant duly made that application to the landlord, and the landlord refused it on the basis that it would bring the tenant a step closer to being able to enfranchise, so to compulsorily purchase the freehold. So the Supreme Court decided that the task for the lawyer and for the court is not to look back at the original purpose of the covenant. It is to determine whether or not the landlord's behaving reasonably just by looking at the facts as they are, as at the date when the landlord's consent is sought. So the outcome of this case is really quite startling for practitioners. Its ramifications are going to have to be worked through on a case-by-case -case basis, but it's quite difficult to know how to approach one of these cases the next time it comes across your desk. The Supreme Court doesn't appear to have overruled the long line of cases, of which Arnold and Britain is one, that says that practitioners should be looking at the purpose of the covenant and construing the clause in its context. However, it's really not clear how sequent nominees sits alongside those other cases, because they weren't even referred to in the judgment of the majority, so we don't have a reasoned decision telling us the best way to approach this type of case in the future. It seems to be the case that where the parties have used the word reasonable in a contract to express a qualification on how one of the parties is to behave, there's in fact no restriction on how that clause is to be interpreted, not even under the guise of construing the words in the contract. Can that have been what the Supreme Court really meant? What are the ramifications of this for reasonable endeavours clauses, for example? Conventional wisdom dictates that those are to be construed in their context, like any other contractual provision. So does the decision in sequent nominees turn that on its head? One very important point for practitioners to note is that where contracts contain a bespoke individually negotiated provision, they should probably now be revisited to see whether there is a separate boilerplate provision that cuts down the width of that bespoke clause. When it comes to leases in particular, the landlord and the tenant will have negotiated at the outset a premium that will have been based on the generosity or otherwise of what is expressly granted to the tenant, for example, under the user clause. Practitioners are going to want to sit down with their landlord clients and their tenant clients to revisit the terms of leases, because if there's a boilerplate provision hiding somewhere in a lease, it may well be determined that that cuts down the width of an express grant, and that, in turn, is going to affect the value of the leasehold interest itself.